I think we're live on Facebook. <laughs> Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. And I'm here with Barbara Heffernan, my friend and fabulous therapist. And we were just, I was just saying to her, there are so many things we could talk about. And so many of them are very timely uh, in this current environment that we're in. But today we're going to focus on rewiring your brain for joy. So thank you, my friend, for coming on. And um, can you just give people a little bit of an idea of what you do, your work, and your specialty and your areas of expertise? Sure, sure. And thanks, Kristen, for having me. And just to clarify what Kristen said, I am definitely her friend. I am not actually her therapist. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Kristen and I have known each other for about uh, 20 years, I think, and um, have participated in mastermind groups together about our businesses and traveled to China together and all sorts of things. So it's really oh, fun to <laughs> be, on your, be on your Facebook page. So my online business is a life coaching program to help people live with more joy. My prior business and one that I still do is one-to-one -one psychotherapy. And that's how Kristen has known me primarily. And with my psychotherapy practice, I've specialized with anxiety and trauma. And I do EMDR, I'm an EMDR therapist, and I do all of my one-to-one -one therapy now online. Um, and then I started a YouTube channel about a little over a year ago, and it's growing very quickly, which is fun. And I'm, I have some online coaching programs. So that's a little bit about me and Kristen. And there's no um, better year to find uh, help with anxiety and trauma and the things that you specialize in this year, really, uh, no matter what's going on in, in your life, it's just what's going on in the world. So what, when we chose a title, you mentioned rewiring your brain for joy. Can you explain a little bit about what rewiring our brain is and how that's even possible? Because I think a lot of people think that what's set is set. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Great question. So our brains have neuroplasticity. And many people have probably heard that term by now, but neuroplasticity just really means that the brain changes, grows, is impacted, and it is changed by our experiences, it's changed by how we think, um, it's changed by all sorts of things. And we can self-direct some of those changes. So there's now this term, which I love, called self-directed neuroplasticity, Ooh. which means that a conscious effort to engage in both behaviors and thought patterns that can rewire your brain. So in working with people with trauma and with anxiety, really the, the main thing that I have focused on for like 20 years now is helping them rewire how they think because we get stuck in thought patterns, right? So it takes a lot of effort and a lot of practice to change, but it is possible. Yeah, it does take a lot of a lot of effort. And right now, I think for many of us, we I'll just speak for myself, we struggle being positive in this current climate. And what is, you know, I hesitate to use the word normal, but what is like a a typical or a reasonable stress response and reaction during the things we've been going through and what is um, to the point where we maybe need some additional help mm. or intervention. Yeah, so that's a, obviously a big question and a complicated question. Right now, what's happening in the world can definitely feel overwhelming and can create an anxiety response. And it's overwhelmingly sad. And anxiety often, I believe, keeps us from feeling sadness. Mm. So anxiety is a reasonable response when we can do something right like so when we have i, I differentiate between productive worry and unproductive worry mm. so productive worry is you know i'm worried about xyz but here are the steps i can take to address that problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. unproductive worry is like i got no control okay 
So, but our minds think that we do. So that's, that's what really becomes the anxiety, more disordered anxiety is, sure, should everybody, you know, be concerned about COVID right now? Yes, wear your masks, limit your interaction with people who aren't part of your pod, right? We have to take all of these steps to keep ourselves and our society safe, right? And the other people we love. Be concerned, take your steps. Beyond that, there's not much we can do. So really anxiety as a disordered state is more about the powerlessness that we don't really want to admit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then what can we, what can we do if we're just feeling that uh, spiraling in our mind and we want to try to regain some control of what we can control? So yeah, that's another big, <laughs> big question. Big questions. <laughs> Generally with, <laughs> with anxiety, we have, um, we have thought patterns that connect to behaviors that connect to feelings, right? And they all intersect. How we think impacts how we feel and behave, how we behave impacts how we think and feel, right? So everybody, it's helpful if people become aware of how that spirals, right? So like, okay, if I'm anxious about COVID and I isolate more and more and I spend all my time reading news and getting upset, right? Then, then I'm spiraling in the wrong direction. So right. where can I intervene to change that spiral? So what is a healthy behavior? Can I go for a walk by myself? Where can I, can I intervene with either behavior or with thoughts? Okay. And so just coming back to the, like the concept of rewiring the brain just for a second, our brains have a negativity bias. The negativity bias has been extremely well researched and proven in humans, mammals, and I even think some other organisms. Mm. And the negativity bias for a human means we focus on the negative. Right. Negative memories tend to get encoded more deeply than positive. If you get 10 compliments mm -hmm. after doing your live and one criticism, you what do you remember? remember the one. <laughs> right? Why is that? Why do we have that? We have that because our our brains think they're protecting ourselves, right? So like in caveman times, right? If you were leaving your cave to go get some berries because you wanted to feed yourself and your family and you heard a rustling in the bushes, you would run back to your cave because the risk of dying was way greater than your desire. So it made sense to pay attention to everything, right? And then at some point you might be like, okay, I got to get a band of people together with me to go look for those berries because otherwise we're going to starve. But, but the behavior is always going to be driven by that survival response. And the problem is that that's how we're wired. And yet almost, you know, very few of us actually are living in those situations today. Mm -hmm. But our brain just scans the environment for what's negative, what's negative, focuses on it, and then what can I do about it? So it's, it's actually a, it's like an, it's like an instinct we don't need anymore. It's almost like an appendix. Like, what does the appendix do? Do we need that anymore? Right. Um, but what that ends up doing is it keeps us focused on the negative all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with the rewiring of the brain and in particularly like rewiring for joy, when do we feel joy? Like what's a moment, Kristen, where you recently have felt that feeling of joy? Um, I had dinner with one of my best friends last night and it was beautiful outdoors by the water and that was joy. And in that moment, how much were you in the moment? I was very in the moment yesterday, but that has been um, not my typical way lately, not in the moment so much. Right. But that mm -hmm. moment with nature, I think with nature and a friend and a chocolate chip cookie that we're having. <laughs> no, I'm kidding about the cookie, not really. But um, I feel like that was just like, it was like a perfect moment and perfect space. It was in the moment for sure. Yes. We experience joy in the moment. 
that is where we feel joy. Now, you know, I kind of say happiness is different, excitement, they're all, all those emotions are a little bit different, but joy for me is in the moment. Right. Therefore, any practice we can do that increases our ability to stay present is helping to rewire your brain for joy. Right. So okay. mindfulness meditation practices, mindful walking, mindfully being in nature, all of that is is helping to rewire that brain. And then also it's, if we're in the moment, it, we can't have those, you know, catastrophic projections that cause us so much anxiety. Mm. So that, that would be one example of something that helps you mm -hmm. stay in the moment. And the piece about rewiring the brain is that the brain chemistry actually changes. And actually the gray matter of the brain changes with our experiences as well. Right, right. That is crazy. That is crazy and fascinating. There's a research study I read like 15 years ago um, when I first began to be really interested in this topic about the researchers took, I don't know, 20, 30 people and had them learn some piano scales. Mm -hmm. And they tracked with the fMRI equipment how much of the gray matter of the brain, the physical gray matter, was attributed to that coordination between music, sound, and finger movement. And in just two weeks, it increased. Wow. And then in that, then they took a different group of people, they taught them the same scale, and they had them just practice it in their minds, not actually at the piano, so just picturing themselves doing it. Yes, yes. And they also had an increase in the gray matter attributed to that activity. So that's a powerful statement on visualization and what it can do for you. Just like yes. you hear about with Olympic athletes and, and um, you know, watching a scene in your mind and actually calling forth the feelings and bringing back that feeling. Like if I sit there here and think about what the feeling I had when I was sitting by the river last night, uh, enjoying my friend's company, like what were the feelings I had? And you can pr pretty much conjure them back up and like yeah. feel them in your body, which is amazing. So when we feel like we don't have control, it's really not true. It's all in, you know, what we do with our, there may be some things we don't have control over, but we do have control over that. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's do a little exercise. On do this. a little exercise. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> So Kristen's example is a great one about, it was very recent for her. It was a moment of joy. So Kristen, I'd like you to bring that to mind okay. as clearly as you can. And for everybody watching and listening, just bring to mind a moment, hopefully in the recent past, but if not, you can go way back. You can go way back to childhood, but a moment where you felt joy, happy, content, safe, whatever feeling you can come to that's positive that has a memory and um, before you close your eyes to really think about it i'm just going to show you a butterfly tapping it's like a little bit of a self-hug and then just a very gentle tapping on either shoulder so it's i'm going to lead you through a little bit of a visualization and then have you do a little bit of self-tapping so just up here I'm sorry? Should I keep them up here for now? You could keep them up there. Tap it away. So just noticing maybe how you feel physically right at this moment as you listen to this talk and just sort of check in with your body what feelings you might be having and then bring to mind this memory, this positive memory and bring it to mind as clearly as you can with all the bells and whistles, any smells, a feeling in the air, what you were feeling in your body. And just take a moment and do the butterfly tapping as you bring all of that to mind. And then just take a deep breath. 
open your eyes. And just note if anything has shifted for you physically. Very calming. It felt calming. And where did you notice? Where did the feeling of calm? Where do you feel the feeling of calm? Um, I probably felt in my shoulders because I'm. I felt like this maybe, and I'm like, yeah. All right. So let's and let's just do that one more time. We'll do it again. And for the people listening, sometimes people have a hard time accessing a memory, and if you do. I'd like you to just bring up a time you felt safe, just physically safe. And it even could be acknowledging that I'm physically safe right now. So if you have a positive memory, let's go back to that. If you're kind of searching around, just come right to this moment and just the awareness that physically in your environment, you're okay. And let's just... Do the butterfly tapping, bring the memory to mind as clearly as you can with all the bells and whistles, sights and sounds and where the sun is. And gently tap. And really breathe in the positive moment. And if there's a positive statement about yourself that you can make that goes with that memory, just bring that positive statement to mind. And really breathe it in, take a deep breath, and then you can open your eyes. Very feel like a reset yeah it's definitely a reset and it's so easy to just take that moment and you know go into yourself and I love what you say about you know all of the senses like bringing you back to um, the sights the smells the sounds yeah yeah because again with the <clears throat> with the issue of where we feel joy, so much of our pleasure is sensory based and we block it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But smells, sounds, sights, smiles on other people's faces, right? Nature. So right. much of it is very sensory. And so really to part of rewiring your, your brain for joy is really taking the moment to, enhance the positive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah well as you know i work i like to always get, you know weave in an essential oil and um that's a great way it's a great anchor and essentially is a great anchor because you can smell something and just even a random smell of christmas trees or fresh cut grass or coffee brewing or something can bring back an emotion and a memory it goes right into that place in our brain where the memories and the emotions yeah. live and that's what I love about an oil. So I would probably do this, like I could even do this in bed, you know, it'd just be a, like a nice way to end, start and end your day or when I'm in the middle of a stressful or anxious time where I feel that mind spiraling and use an oil and have that be an anchor as well. And then when you go back to that oil, it brings you back to that peaceful place that you, you had when you were getting the, going through that little exercise. So I think that could be great. And it's um, funny because I always share an oil at the end of every live. And the one I happened, I forgot to grab one for today. <laughs> but the one I happened to have on my desk from a meeting yesterday was pink pepper. And this is the um, uh, oil of self-acceptance. And it's mm. about self-acceptance, being kinder to yourself, self-compassion, um, and not being judgmental and, um, you know, uh, comparing yourself to others. Mm. So when you talk about negativity bias and the one negative comment, you know, this is um, a way to, you know, that we can release comparison because that never leads to happiness. It um, 
it often makes us more sad. I think when we, I find that especially with social media, when you're mm -hmm. in the feed and everybody seems like they're having a more joyful time than you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it does help that um, the self acceptance. So you can always add that into your. Um, what do you? What would you call this exercise? The I call that butterfly tapping. The whole exercise with the visualization. Is yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Yeah, positive, you know, sort of positive reinforcement with some yeah. butterfly tapping. And the butterfly tapping does a little bit of the dual stimulation of the brain. That's what I and mean. you're completely right about smell and the emotional brain. Yeah. Smell is one of our senses that goes immediately to our emotional brain and can evoke all sorts of memories, good and bad. So it's awesome to anchor. I love that. Anchoring the safe place or peaceful place with a, with a oil. Yeah. And for and for your listeners, Kristen is definitely the one who introduced me to oils. And one of my favorites is balance for. But then I also when I when I go live on either YouTube or on on Facebook, I tend to use a combo, and I'd love to know what Kristen thinks of it, of frankincense and a citrus. That's excellent. Yeah, the citruses are always like. Ener energizing, not always actually, some people find very uh, strong relaxation with certain citruses, but um, the citruses can be energizing and frankincense, you can never go wrong with. And it also amplifies any other oil you're using. So you can always think of frankincense as an amplifier. So when I layer oils, I like to put it on top because whatever I'm calling in, that's gonna just, you know, bump it up a little bit more. And uh, I didn't do it today, but usually when I do lives, I also like to use spearmint because uh -huh. spearmint is the oil of confident speech. And so if you put a little bit on your throat, definitely helps with the communication. <laughs> So this was so fun and I feel like, I mean, how little, with a few people I've talked with on our um, group lives here uh, are also people that I talk with at FTNS when I have the radio show. And so I feel like it's kind of like a deja vu with you. It's <laughs> true. We were on that radio show. That was a long time ago. When was that? It was a long time ago. It was like 2011 and 12 or something like that. Yeah. So I'm having an FTS flashback here. But you are such a wealth of information. I truly appreciate your um, sharing with people these tools that are, again, needed now more than ever. They were always needed. They were always needed. But now you're hard pressed to find anybody who is not in some way impacted. And yeah. so tell people where to find you. And Barbara has a, an ongoing you know, uh, offering of these kinds of tips. So let people know and we'll put it in the comments below as well. Sure, sure. So my um, online business is called awakenjoy.life. So www.awakenjoy.life. And on Instagram, I'm at awakenjoy.life. Uh, Facebook as well. That's probably the easiest. And of course, you can always message me on Facebook and I'll find your message and respond. So wonderful. There are so many tools out there to use. So just use them. They're at our fingertips. And there are many, many that are simple. They don't take long. Just look how, how quick that exercise was. You know, they're free, they're accessible, and they help empower you. So go and do a little of that. <laughs> well, thank you, Barbara. And thanks for watching, thank everybody. And we'll see you guys next week. I'm going to stop the recording first.